Hey everybody, welcome back to Prepper Junkie. Today on the table we have a PSA Jackal. We've waited a long time to get a hold of these. The question is, was it worth the wait? Let's find out. All right, everybody. So yeah, let's start off with this PSA Jackal. Let's go all the way back to the back here and start. We do have a brace on the back here. Obviously it's a triangle brace and it is a folding brace also, which is really nice. So you can just push up and that will fold over like so, making this pretty compact in design. And obviously you can flick it back out and lock it in place. Now moving down to the end piece here, it does have a 1913 pick grill that is attached to it. So if there's a different uh, brace that you want to attach, um, you can switch this, obviously uh, with a screw, just take that out and put a different brace on uh, that fits. We're moving to this end piece here, it's very unique. Uh, and when I take it down, I'll be able to demonstrate how it's kind of put together uh, onto the lower. So, uh, but this is kind of a unique piece. It's actually attached to the lower, not the upper, uh, just so you know. Now moving along, we do have the 1913 pick rail all the way along here. We do have an EOTEC uh, EXPS 3-0 attached on here for the review. Now the upper is a monolithic upper. It's all one piece, except from this bottom piece actually attaches with a couple of screws. But the actual upper part here is as a monolithic upper, which is really cool. And it's kind of expensive to do monolithic uppers. Um, it's not an easy process, but it's very nice to have because with traditional ARs, you'll have that break when you typically will have that break, unless you're using like an LMT, um, where you have the front, the kind of the handguard with the, with the pick rail, then you have the, the upper receiver that, you know, and so, without having that joint right there, you can mount optics kind of like if you have like a scope or something like that, there's no bridge to gap, like it's a big no-no with obviously AR-15s, it does not matter with the Jackal. So, um, and it has other benefits too, but really cool, do like the monolithic upper. <clears throat> now, moving down, we do have obviously the ejection port right here, you do have a brass deflector, now the lower is a standard, it's based off a standard Air 15 lower, right? So we have the mag release, then we have a very cool logo of the Jackal right there, I do like that, very sweet. On the other side, um, they do have obviously standard safety and you do have a mag release, uh, excuse me, a bolt catch bolt release right there. Um, I feel like they, it would have been nice if they did an ambi safety, is it a big deal? No, can I install one myself? Absolutely, uh, but I think it would have been a nice touch if we had a bit of an ambi on there, but not a big deal. Moving down, we do have a basic standard grip um, um, I don't like these, um, I've made that very clear in the past, but I think it's smart that they put these on because everyone has different preferences, right? Um, some people might like these, I bet the majority of us probably don't and we'll end up switching them out anyway. So if they put a cheaper stock on, uh, excuse me, a, a cheaper grip on, it probably you know cuts down on the cost a little bit and then we can just switch it out to whatever we want anyway. Now, moving along, we do have a straight trigger guard right here. We have a, a PSA enhanced polish trigger an EPT trigger as they call it. So let us take a look at this. So let's have a look here. You've got a little bit of take up and I mean, you're literally actually pretty much at the wall. There's like almost no take up whatsoever. So you've got a nice crisp audible break and let's try that reset. Thunk, man, that's very positive, very tactile and audible. It's it's a, it's a pretty decent trigger. It's a, it's a, nice, up uh, a nice upgrade from a mil spec trigger. It's not as nice as some other triggers, but um, yeah, it's not too bad. All right, so let's move along. Let's go up to the top here. Um, so we have a side charging handle right here. Now, the, it's a non-reciprocating charging handle, so when this gun fires, it doesn't come slamming back in your hands like the old scars do, it does stay forward. Um, so you do have a side charging handle, you can switch this to the other side, it's very easy to do, I'll show you when we take the gun down. Um, but it's kind of cool, I do like the side charging handle a lot. You do have M-lock slots in, uh, at the three, six, and nine o'clock position, so perfect to add whatever lights, lasers, whatever you may need onto there. Um, it doesn't come with backup sights either, just so you know, there's no like M-Bus sights with this. So if you want uh, iron sights, you need to buy them. So below the handguard, we have a long stroke piston system. 
and we do have an adjustable gas block up here, it has four positions. Now it does come with paperwork with your Jackal and it does tell you what those positions are and what they accomplish. And I will screenshot this and roll it in. Essentially, uh, position one is gonna be for steel case, uh, two to three loads, 55 grain and under. Position two, most common 556 five, and heavier grain 223s. Position three, fine tuning for 556 five, NATO and high pressure loads. And position four is for common for most suppressed applications. Um, so again, I'll roll that in so you guys can read that and check that out. So uh, so yeah, we do have adjustable gas block. Now they've already made a change to the Jackal uh, gas block um, a few weeks ago. Uh, when you were turning, I guess people were able to turn, there was an issue and it was uh, the people were turning it too far or something and it was coming out but there's now a little depressed detent to take it to actually take it out to make it a lot safer um, and considering I think that's really I mean PSE really listens to their customers I think because that was a really really quick reaction and a really quick fix so very impressed with PSA um, we do have a 10 and a half inch barrel and it's a 4150 CMV the twist rate is a 1 in 7 and we have a standard half by 20 thread pitch up here with your standard birdcage all right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the camera angle around we'll put this down on the table uh, we'll take it apart give you a really close look up on the inside and show you how it ticks Bear with me. Okay, it's a little harder to get the whole gun in view because uh, we're so close here. Um, but you can see, you know, the standard features here. Now to take this down, as I said, this is a standard AR-15 lower. It does have a couple of cosmetic differences, but it is uh, based off of standard uh, AR-15 lower. So you've just got the front and back takedown pins, and then you can just slide the lower off. Now you can see here how this has been attached. It's kind of kind of different. Now. You can actually use any AR-15 lower with the Jackal upper. The only thing you've got to watch out is like, I have an SBR lower, but it has the Geisley Maritime mount, which is uh, lengthways. So obviously, because the bolt release is designed uh, to, the button's designed to go right in there. So if you have a, an enlarged or something that's not standard, it's not going to fit. So just bear that in mind. But this will take any AR-15 lowers um, that you want. So it's, if you have an SBR lower, if you have a different lower with a brace on or whatever you want to do, you can actually use that if you wish. However, I think this is pretty cool and there's that jackal i think that's pretty sweet right there okay now to take this down it's pretty simple you're just going to go to the back here and you're going to push push forward and down and you'll take out your guide rod and spring like so and then slide out so this is your bolt carrier group you can see right here with your piston like so it's pretty hefty and then next part you would do is go to your charging handle, slide this back. Now, if you want to switch it out, you would you pull it back and then you would just slide this out. And then you'd go to the other side and then you would just push that in and you would just make sure that it's flush on the other side. It's very hard for me to do it behind the camera, but you would just make sure it's flush on the other side and then put it back together and then you'd be... Uh, you'd have a charging handle on the other side. Now there's also what they call, a, and I've been shooting this and it's filthy, just so you know, there's a sled in here is what they call it, or what your, uh, with what your charging handle connects to. This is your sled right here. All right, we are back together. Okay, so let's go over shooting it. I'm about over 300 rounds through it. I've had uh, zero issues, no problems. It's very flat shooting, pretty soft recoil. Um, yeah, no problems whatsoever. Uh, accuracy has been pretty good. I'm going to rule in an image. I just, um, I shot at the local range, 25 yards with just a red dot and a, uh, and a bench rest. And, the, you know, I think it, you know, it's only 25 yards, but I mean, the accuracy obviously is there, especially at that distance, obviously further out uh, to be determined, but um, I'm definitely not disappointed with it uh, as of yet. Really, really fun to shoot. Now, I haven't had a chance to suppress this yet. I'm just running it as it comes. Obviously, um, one of the bigger tests will be running this suppress with the adjustable gas block. Um, I think, you know, they, they do plan on having a 300 blackout um, coming out eventually uh, for the Jackal, which I think will be even better. If you want to suppress, then that will probably be the step that I would go uh, with that 300 blackout. But really cool design. We've waited a long time for it. I'm definitely not disappointed. Um, so far, it's been it's been pretty dang cool. Um, nice compact package. Love the side charging handle. Yeah, very cool. Um, 
<clears throat> that's pretty much it for the moment, folks. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, please ask them below. I'm always happy to help out wherever I can. Uh, links in the description if you want to buy one. Now, these are obviously new out, and yes, they are a bit of a pain to get a hold of. Um, they will eventually come in stock, so just keep checking, um, and I'm sure you'll get one soon enough. Um, yeah, and if you haven't had that like and subscribe button, please do so. It doesn't cost you a dime. Helps me out a ton, and I greatly appreciate it. And that's it, folks. Until next time, I'll catch you later.